boundary value problems are this time around what I'm doing is instead of defining my independent variable at a particular point I'm gonna go ahead and define my boundary conditions at let's say two different points right and typically associated with that it doesn't have to be but typically associated with it is a space variable so this this comes in handy from the mechanical engineering standpoint so we have the beams I can look at the left hand side I can look at the right hand side of the beam and I can define those two as an example right so basically boundary value problem let's write it over here conditions spec specified at two or at least it can be more points let's call it points so that is the only difference between bbp and ibp all right and actually this bbp boundary value problem is used too often actually you can go ahead and look at your textbook that i assigned and in the partial differential equations the chapter title is boundary value problems without specifying anything further than that so it is comes in fairly handy okay and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you one particular example and the example is definitely coming from mechanical engineering or physics even right um, so I have a beam and the beam is being you know deflected something like that and I have a distributed force I do do this in my fluid mechanics class a lot if you took that cross from me you will be seeing that the distributed force in the fluid statics is very common and I'm going to call this Wx the distributed force and I'm going to call this x is equal to 0 I'm going to call this x is equal to L obviously this, uh, this is the x-axis right and if I look at the deflection of this I'm not going to go into detail details because this is not a uh, solid mechanics class but E times I times the fourth derivative of the deflection is going to be minus this w of x okay so i'm looking at the deflection that's called y the length of the beam is l right and the loading as i mentioned the distributed force is wx and it's typically defined in newton per meter if i'm talking about the si units right and this is the euler euler or euler beam theory again i'm sure you have been exposed to this and this is defined between 0 and L right that's what I said in terms of the length of the beam now my question to you is what is the what is the number of boundary conditions that I need to obtain over here and the answer to that is I think it's very clear already it will be 4 so I need to come up with 4 boundary conditions okay so let's say that I write y 0 is equal to 0 and I say y prime of 0 is equal to zero as well I'll talk about physical meaning of this in a minute and I'm gonna go ahead and write the second derivative of of the deflection on the right hand side zero and I'm gonna also go ahead and write that the third and at the L will also equal to zero All right so so what I mean to say is here is this I'm looking at this end and you can see that this is fixed as this is fixed what happens is the displacement at this end is going to be zero right in the y direction that makes sense we, we, we know that um, and the y prime of zero is equal to zero means that as this beam or the cantilever is coming out of the wall so the slope will be zero you can see how I draw right the slope is changing but at the initial point the slope is not changing that's why I have the second boundary condition right and now these two were defined at the left hand side now the last two are defined at the right hand side of the beam so that's why this is called a boundary value as opposed to initial value problem okay and this actually what it means is that the moment and this is also the shear force those will be zero at the beam end over here okay so this is a pretty uh, you know applied example of how i can use the boundary value problems obviously this will be co coming in very handy as an example um, this is fairly straightforward Euler beam theory or Euler beam theory is fairly standard but when I start doing a partial differential equations now I'm gonna look at the guitar strings I'm gonna give it a display mint I'm gonna let it go we are gonna look at the frequency we are gonna look at the phase you know all different kind of sort of things it's gonna get fairly um, in-depth but we still will use these fundamentals to apply to it before I close this uh, segment, I want to talk about um, something else. Um, let's say that, uh, oh yeah, there we go. We, this is an example. 
I gave you this particular question. And by the way, let's be honest, you wish, right? Yeah, okay. But still, let's say this is an exam question. And you come up with this and you box it up, right? And then, you know, you're good to go from the exam standpoint. So my question to you is, how do you really know that this is the only solution? How do you know this is the only solution? And in mathematical terms, when I talk about the only solution, it means it's a unique solution, right? So my question is, how do you know this is a unique solution? Because I can give you one more example. Let's go up. This. It usually comes in from the singular solutions. So I, let's say that this now was the exam question. Can you do it? Actually, you, you can very well can do this, okay? Now, you can practice after I show you this dy dx is equal to y. You can also go ahead and do this. You can do separation of uh, variables. Anyways, you obtain this. But I also said that, look at it. y is equal to is a, a solution as well. It's a singular solution, but it doesn't matter. It's a solution. So my question is, how do you know that there is, let's say, obviously I'm going to exaggerate in here, but let's say there's 25 different solutions and you only solve one of them. Do you now think that you deserve the whole credit? Right? So now I'm going to answer that question for you. Okay? And the way that I'm going to answer that question for you will be based on a, a theorem. Okay? And I'm going to call this existence of a unique solution. So now the question actually, or rather this theorem, is even one step further than what I ask you to do. There's a unique solution, okay? I, know, I now, okay, I'm restricting myself to a single unique solution. In addition to that though, I'm looking at the existence because the solution may not exist. It doesn't have to have a solution, right? Because if it doesn't exist in real life, you, have, you can have any partial differential equation that you want, ordinary as well, right? You can have any, 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 but how do you know this can happen in nature? There will be a bunch of differential equations that doesn't exist in nature and they will have no solution. So that is the question that I'm trying to answer with the first word of this particular theorem. Okay? Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, leave it to you to look into this in detail. But if I have a first order IBP and this will be given by dx dy is equal to f of xyi and my initial condition will be y at x is equal to 0 will be equal to y. Very generic terms. A unique solution in region. What I mean by region is a two-dimensional uh, space. Exists if. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Let's wait a second. A unique solution in a region. Okay. What I mean by region is. I have, let's say that you know, uh, I don't know. The curve is like this, and I have a particular point. Let's call this x zero, y zero, right? That is the boundary condition or initial condition that I have, right? And if I plot like an axis over here, let's say that this is x, this is y, and let's have a region. Region is usually two-dimensional, right? So I have a region like this. Within this region now, the question is this, a unique solution in that region. Um, and you can call, for instance, this point to be A, this point to be B, this point to be C, this point to be D, right? So I can have a unique solution in, in this region if now both f and its are continuous in this particular region only. I don't really, if there's, let's say that this function and its derivative or rather the partial with respect to y is continuous within this region then I'm good to go. I will have a unique solution and it will exist. And if this uh, particular uh, function and it is partial with respect to y is not continuous, but this is where the discontinuity happens, I'm good to go with this particular region. Okay, so I only look at this region. Thank you for watching this segment. We'll catch up soon.